everybody. Um, I'm inaugurating a new game folder on my page um, for uh, ship games. And uh, so um, it will be for both um, sail, fighting sail, uh, galleys, and um, uh, more modern ships, battleships, and so forth. Um, so uh, this is just, so to inaugurate that folder, um, I'm going to start with a game of Captain's Bold, a game of dueling frigates. So um, you see, it's basically you have one frigate on each side. You can have more, but um, it, at base it's just you know one ship versus one ship. It comes from um, the warartisan.com website, which has a few rule sets, two or three, I think, I can't quite remember. Anyway, I sort, of, I sort of stumbled across this. Um, 2014, Jeffrey Knudsen. And he's obviously very knowledgeable about boats and so forth like that. And he also crafts some beautiful um, paper boats. You can download those or, or you buy them off him. I'm not sure. I think you buy them, yeah. And can craft them yourself. So he knows a lot about the thing. But what he's done here is he's boiled down um, ship to ship combat. To it's kind of basic so he said he's not bothered about all the um it's became simple somewhat stylized so that you can um the decision you, you're involved in the commander's decision making process so you're not worried too much about you know um little details um so uh yeah and i, I want to present it because i think it is a lovely little simulation now um it's a PDF for print and play and a free game at, at that. Um, you essentially you need uh, when you get the game you get a load of counters so you have each ship if I can zoom over here um, each ship has uh, guns so you have three cannons typically on one side three on the other side and then three sail markers Maybe it's that better if I look over here. So typically there would be a third sail marker here. And that is the ship that you start with. Now there are some variations for, um, uh, for heavy cannons, carronades, um, and uh, sloops or something with, with less sails, that kind of thing. But then that's your basic. So you start with two ships like that, and then you probably end up something like this, whereby... Um, this ship has gone down to one sail, it's got one cannon left on one side, and it's accruing hit markers like that. So pretty much it's the game over for that ship as compared to its opponent here. And then you also get um, a sheet with, uh, so you get quite a lot of those markers, uh, in including some also flats, so you can play it flat if you like. Um, uh, so you could play, I, I think there's enough markers, depending on your mix of ship, for four ships to be run at once. But you can obviously print up the sheets again to print up more ships. Then you also get a sheet with uh, two ships on it, double-sided like that, and then two of these hexagons. And you need at least four. Um, I printed out six. My printer colour went a bit wonky, so some of these are a bit pink. I turned one over. Um, to print the little diagram which you get in the rules which is that essential thing it's to do with the wind so how much um, uh, movement points you get depending on where the wind is and um, so that's just a play aid for me there's the wind so that you can normally leave that off off the thing and you roll for wind direction at the start of the game you basic game you start i think more or less like that so many points away from each other and uh, roll for wind direction um one person so it's just random and it stays in the same direction for the whole game okay so the ships are facing each other you have um three cannons each uh no hit markers no speed markers and um, three cannons each side each there's a, a carronade and there's a heavy cannon so that's the variation you get in the game and three sails markers each so you start 
at full sail with all guns loaded, which is what those markers represent. And then um, you check for your wind. So according to this, um, uh, so let me see if I can try and use a naval term so we get... So you're either... So if you have the wind... Oh, I won't explain it. Uh, I, I won't go into the to explain it because I'll probably make a mess of it and it'll take a while. But basically, you know, depending on if you're A, A, B, B or C to the wind, B, B is the best position to be in relation to the wind. You get three wind points or movement points or speed points. Directly with the wind behind you, you only get two. I suppose that's because, you know, some of your sails are blocking the other sails from catching the wind. And when you're kind of slightly into the wind, you get one point each. So... As this stands, um, this one is in broad reach, so it gets the most wind. So he would get three wind markers. And the other fellow is heading into the wind, so he will only get one wind marker. And then you check your sails. So they're both under full sail. So um, they each get two extra for being under full sail. And then you go to the movement step. And in the movement step, if you have three wind movement, whatever points, you have to spend them. So this guy and um, move a point. So this guy would have to spend three and then he would have two left. Now, um, the person who has the wind gauge, so the person who's... There's that close with the wind. So, uh, coming down from them. Sorry, I love these kind of games, but it's, you know, it's difficult to get your head around it. it a sort of the weather gauge. A ship which is upwind of the opposing ship. Yeah, so he is upwind of this one. So he gets the weather gauge, so he has the initiative, so he can choose whether to move first or not. So this guy's going to spend his three win points. You have to do it. And um, basically you're on a dot on a line. So um, parallel to the line. So fa facing down the lines. So um, he has to go forward one and then you can turn once. Or you, have to or you can turn once and possibly you can turn twice. As long as you don't come into the wind. Now, he's already into the wind. I guess turning that would be directly into the wind. Now, there's no um, notification for what happens if you are in this position. So I, I take it that... Um, you, uh, you, you gain no wind points. You just get whatever your sails give you um, in that position. But anyway, so he could turn one point and then if he's turning away from the wind he could say turn another point now this one has to spend three he goes forward one and he elects to stay where he is um then you would go to um the gun oh sail adjustment step so now you decide look do, maybe i want to go to battle sails which is two masts sort of furled as it were because um you can take more damage against your sails if you have full sail and you're being fired upon well these guys are quite far away so they may as well stay under full sail for optimum sailing conditions so no sail adjustment there then we go to the gunnery phase you can fire your guns in in this covered arc essentially so anywhere within there and um, these normal guns have three hex range. Um, carronades have a one hex range, and heavy guns have a four hex range. Um, to just say we were in this position, so he's one, two, three hexes away. So you have to roll the number of, I say hexes, but it's actually dots, isn't it? So you have to roll the number of dots they are away, plus two. So he's three dots away, plus two is five. So you have to roll five or higher on d6 to hit. And um, this one's got three cannons on that side. So you roll 3d6 and there's one hit. Um, now because it's um, the first 
uh, broadside. Um, you add one to each of the dice rolled. So he's got two hits, in fact. And there should be a marker to indicate it's the first broadside. But um, you know, I can just remember that. So um, there's actually two hits on this fellow here. And then all three of these guns are flipped to mark the fact that they are unloaded. Um, now, when you fire, you can opt to fire to the sails or to the so high or low, depending on when you fire according to the roll of the waves. So say this fellow opts to fire at high. So that's, um, he, he rolled dice again, and on a 1 to 5 you get how it hits the sails on a 6, it actually hits the hull as it were. So I got a 6 and a, th and a 1, so that's um, a hit to the sails and a hit to the guns as it were on that side so this could represent hits to the guns the crew you know fouling the guns firing and all that so that's one point of hits on each side normally you'll stick them at the top here to indicate and uh, then the opponent fires back now um when you accumulate three hits on one side or on the sail or the other side then you have to remove a marker so if he had three hits there he'd have to remove um one of those cannons uh, if he had three hits here on the sails he would have to remove one of the sail markers um then obviously then he cannot go up to full sail um uh so that's basically the game now um in case of instead of firing you can reload it doesn't specify it i don't know maybe it's in the rules um if you can fire with one side whilst reloading with the others you know maybe i don't know if you have enough crew for that kind of thing so it's one or the other um as i understood it uh yeah and uh because this guy was at full sail Um, and then so I would re-roll again any hits and I could score additional additional hits on his sails if he was at full sail um, if you're firing down the, the bow or the stern of a ship it's a rake and um, you roll two dice per gun, gun mark of yours firing so that's, that's potentially double damage so, um, and that is, that is it. So you, you have uh, the sail phase with the wind step, where you check the number of wind markers you're getting. You, then you do the movement. Then you adjust your sails if you wish. Then you go to the gunnery phase where you fire or reload and then check for damage and then repeat. And uh, it, so it moves really quickly and it's very nice because um, although you might only be moving one point uh, oh yes, that's it. If you have um, six um, movement points, wind points, which could well happen if you have, say, a couple left over from one turn, then you, you're you sailing with the wind and you have full sails, then you can move two points. And that's when you get sort of nifty manoeuvres where you move one turn, move another turn and get a broadside or a rake or something like that without your opponent being able to fire back. So, um, although you sort of only move one or two points a turn, it doesn't feel slow because the turns go so quickly and, you know, many turns you're not going to be firing, so you're just going to be moving, accumulating moon points, moving, accumulating moon points, maybe then moving twice, trying to get over on your opponent. And uh, the board is this hexagonal figuration, so it's that end of the world situation. You just, oh, we're coming to the end of the world, and you just bring your extra hexagons over. Kapow! And that's it. So that uh, was nice. I've, I played it once. I had fun. Um, it would be nice to play this with, uh, you know, as a sort of light diversion. And essentially, um, I think it's great because, y y okay, you decide when to fire, what range to fire. Uh, but apart from that, you're deciding um, 
how to manoeuvre in relationship to the wind. And because the wind doesn't change all the time, it doesn't give you that kind of headache in some other games. So you can always... Um, you're playing with the wind, and so you're always going to be sort of tend to be sailing, you know, away from the wind. So the board's going to be regenerating in that direction. But um, that's one of the fascinations of the sailing ship games is the, the fact that you, you have to manoeuvre according to the wind. And I still don't have it. You know, I played a few games, not but not enough to have that kind of conceptually at ease in my head. So quite a, a simple... Um, demonstration of it such as this game gives I hope it's going to give me more of an idea to see how do you maneuver to the wind um you know without turning around and finding yourself dead in the water um errata uh, rules questions um I don't think this is on board game geek so I'm going to stick it on board game geek and then maybe we'll get um comments errata rules questions on there I had um uh, some questions, uh, is it possible to turn without moving? So, for example, I, I had one of the ship there, it had that, as you saw it, it had one mass left. Um, it was facing into the wind, and so it could accrue no... With one mass, you don't get any bonus wind points. Facing into the wind, there's no um, indication that you get, gain any wind points. So he wasn't getting any wind points. It seemed he was dead in the water, so my question was, can he actually turn without moving? And then his, he could get some wind in his sails, his sail, and move off. So intuitively he says yes, but there's nothing in the rules about it. Um, and again, you know, what happens if you face the wind? Do you get no wind chits or markers? Um, or, or do you get the same as if you're facing directly away from the wind? Um, I don't know, because I'm not a, a sailor. So... Um, that's it. Uh, there's a, one extra thing to mention. You have, um, when you're facing directly into the wind, you can close haul. Ah, okay, so I missed it. So if you're facing directly into the wind or close hauled, which is close to the wind, like that or that, um, you can choose to back sail. So you kill the ship's forward momentum, brings the ship to a halt. So you move all the wind points and turn all the sail markers face down. The ship does not move. When the ship is close hauled like that, you can tack into the wind, which is as opposed to wearing when you turn away from the wind. So if you tack into the wind, you can only tack if you have three sail markers. Okay, and then then the following turn, you can then just turn one point, pay off to starboard or larboard. Um, okay, so that, I think, answers my question without explicitly addressing it, is that you can only turn when facing into the wind if you have three um, sail markers. Okay, so that's it. That's the game. Captain's Bold. Um... Uh, just has some deck, some illustrations on how to build the boats and so forth. It talks a little bit about matchups. So it says most single ship actions took place between ships that were roughly equal in force because the captain's outgunned would generally flee and there was no loss of honour in doing that. It's understood it was a sensible thing to do. But you could um, have unequal matchups or two ships against one. Well, for example, an American heavy frigate against in the War of eighteen twelve against a normal frigate, and so here's some illustrations. So, for example, that's the American heavy frigate. Um, USS Constitution. Um, sorry, that's out of focus now, isn't it? So, you've got four, three heavy guns and two carronades on each side. Against, for example, the USS Essex of the same war has just got three carronades on either side. N they're not long range guns. I think they get a bonus to hit at short range there. Um, uh, and you've got large 40 to 44 gun frigate. So that's got four um, cannon markers on each side. Late 32-38 gun frigate of the Napoleonic Wars. 
got carronades as well as normal guns. Late small sloop. Um, so that's got two guns, one carronade each side. Um, there's your classic Seven Years' War, American War Dependent, Fourth Anglo Dutch War, 32 38 gun frigate. And there is an early large sloop or small frigate, 20 to 28 guns. So that's it. There's the game. Captain's Bold, a game of dueling frigates. And it includes some nice poetry within it.